Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12, where I have forgotten something about our lunar KTS. The heat shield is still just a Gemini heat shield, I believe. So let me roll that back and we gotta take a look at it. But if we need to unlock the Apollo heat shield, and I really did forget about that, that's going to take a bit because we don't have the money. Well, actually, I've, I think we spent all the unlock credit that we had, so yeah, it might take a while to get the money for that. I don't know how much worse that's gonna make our whole situation either. Okay, adjustable heat shield. Yep, Gemini. We have early lunar and lunar heat shields. Okay, mm so that cuts out about 130 meters per second. This lunar rated heat shield is better than the early lunar. So you should probably go for that, but it's more expensive. <laughs> um, it doesn't say anything about unlock cost, but uh, actually, for some reason, the some of these changes do not happen in here, but when I try to launch it... Okay, it says unlock zero. Well, no. Oh, so I'm spending 40,000 unlock credit. I thought I'd spent all my unlock credit, but I guess I hadn't. Okay, well, good deal. Yes. Okay, fine. I didn't have to click that button. So save edits. Okay, I'm confused now. It says unlock zero, spending 40,000 unlock credit, base cost 40,000. Uh, it's not doing that, and I acknowledge... Maybe I shouldn't do it like this. Okay, um... Okay, I do have unlock credit, so that's fine. I do actually have unlock credit. By the way, people ask me to use the D2 descent module and such. I don't like it. It's too steep. It's not right. So I'm never going to use that. It just doesn't look right to me. Um, yeah, that is not well suited for our purposes. I don't know why they would make it like that. That looks dangerous. It looks worse than the Mark 1 pod as far as stuff sticking out and potentially getting overheated. If we do a lifting re-entry, this stuff would get torched. I don't like it. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know why people ask me to use it. No, it looks horrible. Anyway, so, moving on. Uh, we are going to have to figure out a way to unlock the better heat shields. Let me see if I can do it during uh, in the tech tree. Oh, here we go. Lunar heat shields. Okay, we have unlocked it. Now, can we do this? Uh, I get the feeling that as we upgrade this heat shield, it's got even less chance of getting to the moon. So there's that. Uh, are we getting more up later? I mean, barely. Sheesh. Okay. Well, that's going to take a long time, but fair enough. All our astronauts are free. I really wish I had the money to do the Maya spacecraft. But right now we don't have a pressing purpose. Uh, we, we really don't need proficiencies in all these things. Some of these things... There ought to be some way of preventing people from using it as the sole cabin, basically. Okay, mission training. Well, we can't have as many people working on it, it looks like. It's gonna take a whole month at this rate to roll it out. Because of... Where, where are we spending all this money? Research teams do take a lot. Facilities... All right, well, um, well, we'll just close ELA 2. I mean, the pad construction is happening. Well, I mean, the launch complex. Let's just slow that down. Well, we waited. It's December 12, 2003, and we are going to just go for it. Okay, yeah, it's uh, not super great looking. 
on the bright side, it's rather dim. On the not so bright side, it's rather dim. Uh, so we can't get a very good look at it. But anyway, let's see if I've messed up something other than the visuals as far as this rocket is concerned. So throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. We're past the speed of sound pretty quickly. Probably should have turned more vigorously, but then again we have to toss it up pretty high for this stage. Okay, G-Force mitigation is not actually active on here. I did not do the action groups. Okay, booster set. I'll ditch the launch escape system here since that's how we have it. Okay, well that doesn't... Okay, fine. <laughs> it's fine, it's right. All four engines lit. These are the new ones, so that wasn't guaranteed. They've still got ignition chance 93%. It's looking tight. It's plausible, but tight. I mean, but that's, I knew that was how it's going to be. I think we'll be just a little bit short of the moon. Maybe just a little bit of difference in the trajectory would have worked out for us. Oh, we lost one. Oh, they are tilted. That shouldn't be much of a problem. Not at all. Oh, we lost two. Well, burn time-wise, this is more of a problem. Best to get out of the way on this launch, though. HM7's not doing so well on their debut. I swear the RZ-20s have been much better at the start. I mean, we've had failures, but, you know. They, uh... Gave a good first impression. I feel like it might be more conducive to our survival if I move on to the next stage sooner. We are not getting 0.41. Well, maybe now we are, but yeah. Let's just uh, shut that down in stage. And go. I don't know if I can make orbit, it depends on how quickly we catch this. Let's just go vertical. Okay, we're just bringing the pod back. <laughs> right. I'm not sure I like those engines. <laughs> not sure at all. Well, before I lose comms. Why does this shoot read that it's okay? I think something got misconfigured. No, that one looks fine. No, they both look the same. But they're not acting the same in there. Well, I guess I can test the fuel cells. Okay. Well, I mean, we don't have any hydrogen. We should just put hydrogen and oxygen in here. The idea was it was supposed to get from the stage, but yeah, a little bit of hydrogen and oxygen up here wouldn't hurt. Okay, recover, normal recovery. Oh, well, we got 19,000 funds back. That's actually a big chunk of what we launched. I think it was about 40,000, so that's good. Um, we should do that more often. But anyway, uh, yeah. Well, we have to test the engine somehow, and at least this way the payload is recoverable. I guess we'll try it this way. It's better to get the engines their data points soon. Unless I do the J2S thing, but we still have to unlock the tech for that. Oh yeah, I'll add some... Uh, we have some volume available here, so I'll add some... of the fuel cell propellant. Propellant. Fuel cell stuff. We did get 3,339 data units, so that's good. Now the reliability is 94%. 
we're not using any RP1 or HTP on this. I think it's time to reconsider our administrator. Well, I uh, forget what role. Chief Engineer? Chief, en uh, Chief Designer. Uh, Val Cleaver, we hardly knew ye. Uh, we didn't really... There's a cost, a uh, reputation cost, apparently, to removing him. Well, yeah, not going to serve our purposes. Do I want to... Who's, who's good at Hydrolocks? Lushko <laughs> definitely doesn't like Hydrolocks. Research speed. Good for balloon tanks, though. I mean, Bossert was Belgian, right? <laughs> uh, didn't really uh, work in that capacity. Service module tanks are basically on every single control core, though. And those are things that cost a lot and therefore would take a lot of time. So I'm not too sure it is beneficial, actually. Yeah, yeah, I'll just pass on that business. Okay, we now have enough to integrate this, so we are going to. But next up, we are going to deal with our Vesta flyby. You have to put more staff to build that rocket. I feel like there's something wrong with the HM7. Like it's taking way too long to make them. Or the balloon tank attached to it. Maybe we should abandon the balloon tank idea. It just... Okay, Apollo, Apollo training is complete. Oh, 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 I want to stop. Stop, 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 stop. Apparently it's already in Vesta SOI. No, it says orbiting the sun. It's not showing the encounter, though. Uh-oh. Okay, no, no, we didn't miss it. The tracking station was wrong. Phew. Okay. We have a line back. It's not much of a line. 21% transmit. Okay, we are in the SOI of Vesta. Those things are running. Probably close enough, but we can get closer. Let me just RCS it. So we got the transmit science data. That satisfies the flyby requirement. Woo! Okay, I flew by real quick. <laughs> uh, whoops! I was looking at the mass spectrometry and trying to get it to complete, and we just sort of skimmed right by it. Okay, we got a bunch of data. It is on its way out. It doesn't have anything else to do. So, okay. We are done with the small bodies, amazingly enough. And this had quite a lot of extra delta V, but we checked we couldn't do anything with it. So, 2.4 tons though. Anyway, if there were other asteroids or small bodies around here, we'd like divert to another one, just like they actually did, and try to visit it with our 3,000 meters per second and all that, but this is actually coming back to Earth for some reason. Uh, There's like multiple encounters with Earth. So, alright, maybe we'll have a homecoming thing. Some maneuver in the middle. And then it's coming back in 325 days. Okay, well that's a pretty close periapsis, and how much would it take to capture again? Not a whole lot, I don't think. That's definitely a capture. 1,400, so we could do it. Do I want to do it? I don't know. Um, we could send it somewhere else and just get a boost from... Earth. We'll think about that later. Gosh, that's a lot of flyby. It's definitely a cycler. Vesta, we should 
If, if this is how it works with Vesta, I mean, we should uh, definitely take advantage of Vesta. Let's check if Vesta's got something we can use and, like, have cyclers bring it back into Earth orbit so that we don't have to haul it from Earth's surface. I mean, this seems pretty good, doesn't it? Okay. But we'll check up on it at that mid-course correction. It may not be completely dead. We'll see. Though its solar panel wear is 25% already. I feel like getting the more advanced Hydrolox engines and maybe the J2S to make our stage better is a priority. So I am going to spend our newly acquired points from that Vesta flyby and get 1969 Hydrolox as well. It's all Hydrolox here. I'm gonna try and increase the build time. I can't imagine reducing the work rate is perfectly efficient, so probably the sooner we get done with it, the better. Ah, oh, the mission training for Apollo expired. Okay. Well, well, we'll wait on that then. That's fine. Rollout? We seem to have enough for rollout. Well, we might as well. Okay, I'll just launch at night. It's not like I want to look at the rocket anyway. SAS on, throttle up, ignition. Launch. Oh no, we're not going to the right heading though. Uh, let's let's not do that suddenly. Uh, worst dog leg ever. Should have just done an off-plane transfer. Okay, launch escape system. Well, this is not getting to the moon. So I probably shouldn't even correct the inclination. <laughs> okay, staging. That seems like less acceleration than I was expecting. No, it's, it is what it is. So yeah, we're giving the moon a miss in this case. Mistakes were made. Okay, they all went through the entire burn. Not many day units. We got like 3,300 and such before, and we've only gotten 600 more, so that's not great. Okay, RZ20 time. Okay, I want to leave the periapsis low. It doesn't matter where we're burning out of now. So, so our periapsis is sort of close to the ascending node with the moon, but uh, we don't have that kind of delta v. We just want to get to a high orbit and bring this down again. So we have to be careful. We need to be able to pull that periapsis down. We want to do a heat shield test at this point. Also a boil-off test. So, can we really get up to high? Barely, maybe. And then, deorbiting, maybe we can use the RCS. From up there, that might be good enough. We'll see. But we'll also see how the boil-off works. Okay, power? Power is fine. So, right now, maybe because these are new fuel cells, um, now I didn't have to toggle them to get the electric charge, so maybe they have fixed that. I don't know. Results are currently mixed. Okay, go! So again, the high orbit goal in particular is to see if we can do these with crew. There's a whole passing through the radiation belt thing that may or may not require shielding. We currently have no shielding. That's something we might want to test. Maybe as Viola's last fling or something. I mean, an extra percent chance of cancer 
at this stage, you know. Well, let's push it a bit. Okay, 40,000 kilometers. Let's see. Some of it's just going to be fuel cell consumption for the hydrogen and oxygen. Some of it will be boil off. Doesn't seem like much of either. So that's pretty good. And we are high over the Earth. Where is the Earth? There it is. This is sort of like the Delta IV heavy test of Orion. Basically, that's what this is. Except we might put crew on it later. And we'll just use RCS and see if that's good enough. It seems to be. It's good to know anyway. Uh, that might be too much. Though Orion, I think, had a negative periapsis coming in because they wanted to simulate a harsher re-entry. They weren't tossing up as high as the moon, but by having a negative periapsis, they made the re-entry just as harsh as if it was coming back from the moon. So, okay. Well, we can just roll around like that. That's fine. Comms have still been fine. Hey, Separation. Arming parachutes. And here we go. We are actually approaching South America, though very much Amazon as far as our eventual landing spot. Oh, well, let's do descent mode. I'm gonna say let's go 68% for starters. Instead of turning off Smart ESS, maybe I'll just tell it to hold a higher pitch. But then, when we roll around, would I have to tell it to go negative then? I guess I'd have to... Well, that's inconvenient. Off. I will try and control roll manually. Ablation is happening. Uh-oh. Odd overheating. Let's reduce that. Hmm, that's problematic, isn't it? Okay, well, I guess I can't use too much COM offset. I thought the pod actually had really high heat tolerance, too. Okay, well, I want to make sure that we come down, come down, so I'm rolling around this way. Uh, it's not great, though. This isn't even a lunar re-entry. And this is like a top-level Apollo heat shield. Okay, I think we can roll around again. want to mitigate the G-forces. First we needed to make sure that we actually come down, so we go heads down and then... Heads up to mitigate the G-forces, though I'd like a little bit more. See where I'm offset, but I guess... Okay, I think that was pretty well controlled except for the overheating bit. We didn't do much ablation, which is interesting. We'll have to see from the moon though. But yeah, did they nerf the heat tolerance of this pod or something? I don't know. Earth's tropics? Yep, indeed. Hello once again, Brazil. Parachutes are out. Okay, we are on the ground. And recover vessel. We've got comms in the Amazon, by the way. Normal recovery. So yeah, insofar as the test didn't quite work out because we didn't have as much delta V as I wanted, when we got to orbit and needed to boost up, that was because of my fault. I went the wrong way um, and didn't fix the inclination immediately from the start. But whether we can actually get to the moon with this is tough. It's tough. Okay, 21,000 back this time. Well, we haven't actually finished, completed the small bodies flyby thing. Then again, they haven't paid us much of it. I need more slots. 
so we can milk these things. <laughs> uh, I'll let it hang out for a little bit. There aren't any extra missions in it. Lots of Jupiter observation missions. Jupiter observation would take three slots. So if I wanted to keep the small bodies, I'd have to take two more. 250,000. For Jupiter though, because of the long transit time, it could be that we really don't want to go fast with it. And it's not like we have a lot, enough choice. Anyway, we are going to leave that for later. For now, with the Space Center fairly dark at the moment, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.